who can remind me which way blood in veins is traveling? How do we describe it? Toward the heart, right? So on this picture, all the blood is going back up to the heart. Since blood is going that way, I've started teaching the veins by starting at the foot, the last thing we did, and going back. Hopefully, that also helps you with naming these vessels. Now, there's a couple extras here. I'll explain those in just a second. What would this main one behind the knee be? Yeah, popliteal vein. And then as it comes down, this one here that goes forward is the... anterior tibial vein, the anterior tibial. So what about this, and this, and this, and this, where I put the dots? Very good. Posterior tibial vein. Okay. The other little one would be this. It's the fibular, but we're not going to do it. Okay. So we're not going to do that. Here we see two extras. This one that comes off at the knee. Notice the anterior tibia was the first branch after the knee. But this is a new one. We did not have an artery there. This little one here, small. It's called the small saphenous vein. This vein is very commonly used in bypass surgeries. If they have to do a bypass for the heart, they commonly go into the calf and clip part of this vein because we have a lot of extra veins there. We have other veins. So they'll clip this and use part of that. The other one beside that that you see coming down from up here it's also the saphenous vein, but it's called the great saphenous vein. We'll see it in the other picture. So as we go up the leg, we'll see that great saphenous vein. Okay. So that's it, really. Great saphenous vein. If you were asked that, it would be on the upper leg. I'm just showing it here so you'll know what that is. Posterior tibial, anterior tibial, popliteal, we had in the other picture. So realistically, on this picture, there's just one new one, the small saphenous vein. So if you haven't got it yet, go ahead and get that picture. And then let's move up the leg. So as we move up the leg, uh, let's just go up here. Made it too much zoom. There we go. We're just going to do this part. Now, the one thing that you don't know yet, well, a lot of this, but the artery is called the aorta. The vein is called the vena cava. We'll see it in the next picture, but I just wanted to let you know what is right there. It's on the lower end. So I'm just going to give you the abbreviation so that you can see it when you look back at your pictures. When we do our next picture of the guts, I'm going to name that blood vessel, and you'll see it very well on our next two pictures. <clears throat> the rest of these 
except for the great saphenous, are named just like the arteries. What did we call those two? Anybody remember? Good. And these are the veins. So those are the common iliac veins. What's this little branch that goes on the inside called? Internal iliac vein. What would this? Very good. And then right under that as soon as we go under that little cord, the vein changes its name. So here and here and here, just like before, even here. All of that's the femoral vein. True surgery, can these veins be replaced? Like, can they be transplants? Oh, sure. Sure, they, they, they can do, but that's, um, so typically, I don't want to put it. Yeah, they're really good with surgery now, but, um, like if someone had a whole leg that was crushed, they could go in and they could replace it for sure. But it's um, very delicate surgery to replace that. These blood vessels, they have nerves that are attached to them too. So it's not just the blood vessel. It's very com complex. What do we call it when the femoral vein goes behind the knee? Yeah, popliteal. Let me put popliteal the other way because right here we have the small saphenous. Here. So you can see there's a lot there. There's not as many as we have in the pictures, but there's a little bit more on the veins than there was on the arteries. So there's your picture of the veins. Once again, most of them have the same name, but not all of them. My best recommendation to you is when you're practicing these, get one of those plastic uh, page protectors to slide your paper in and write with a marker and then just erase it. And it lets you practice over and over again. Same thing, just practice, practice, practice. If you practice these names a lot, practice writing them, practice labeling the picture, this will feel easy on the test. But if you don't and you wait till the last minute, their names get all jumbled. And I've, I've honestly had people take the test and miss every blood vessel before. I've also had, I've had more people take the test and get every blood vessel right because they are their names. And if you actually looked at how many we, we go through today, there's not that many different blood vessel names. Everybody get the picture? Okay, next one. There we go. This looks better than the arteries because look, ah, they got that out of the way so we can actually see here. What do you think this one is? Very good. Internal. I N T. Next name. 
Gilead. And what is that? External Gilead vein. And what is that? Common Gilead vein. And right here where the two commons come together, now I'll write its big name. Interior vena cava. Okay. Inferior vena cava. See that above the diaphragm? Same name. Doesn't change its name. That inferior vena cava goes all the way up into the heart with the same name. Okay? So unlike the aorta, when it crosses the diaphragm, it doesn't change its name. It stays the same all the way up to the heart. Good news for you guys. There's not as many veins here. There's a lot of veins here associated with the digestive tract, and we save those veins for later. Okay? I bet everybody can tell me this one, though. Very good. Renal vein. This one has a lot of little parts, and they all go to the same organ which is your liver. And so they call them the hepatic veins. Notice there's no trunk there. For the arteries, there was a trunk. Here, these are just little veins that are going into the liver. But remember, which way is all of our blood going? Right, back to the heart. Even that blood there, it's going that way to go back to the heart. That's the direction of the blood flow. Okay, so those veins, blood actually goes out of the liver through those. Okay. There would be a different vein we would see here coming up into the liver, and then that would leave the liver and go to the vena cava. Okay. The only thing left, and I'll do it in blue so it stands out. This one I'm going to go ahead and separate. On the test, you don't have to put left and right here. Yes. Oh, that's okay. You just stretch them. Yeah. So the gonadals, if you remember the arteries, they came here. But if you look here, you only see one. Here's why. The left gonadal is that one with the dots and it comes out of the renal vein. In most people, the right and the left gonadal come from different places. We don't know why that is. It's just how the body forms. Interestingly enough, it forms like that in a lot of animals too, same way. Okay. What do you think this would be? Anybody remember the M? Hmm? Look up the artery. Yeah. Median sacral. Median sacral vein. Median sacral vein. 
Want to take a wild guess, even though they're not on the test? Oh, they're not showing them, so never mind. We won't do it. It's got these extra things that we don't need to worry about. We didn't even see arteries there. Don't worry about it. Everything you need is now marked up there. So go ahead and snag that picture. Notice in the arteries, I didn't always put an arrow where the blood's going because that's the first part we're doing and it makes more sense. Yes. Okay, so the, yes, I can show you that. The dorsalis pedis may be there as well. So let's go back and do that one. So this little arch, and it's the only, and here's what's easy about this. If you're asked the artery or vein, it's going to be the only one that you're asked down there at all on this picture. Remember, just like the arteries, on this version, we'll just do popliteal. So why don't y'all get a picture of this, since I didn't label that there, and it will remind you that I don't do the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, or the saphenous veins on the front of the leg. You wouldn't see those. You would only see them on the back of the leg or the relevant ones up higher. That's all we do on the bottom. Snag that too. I'm glad you asked because I thought about pointing it out and I skipped over it and I forgot to go back to it. Then we get to the chest here and the arm. So I'll do the arm separate. Let's mark up. Yeah. So we can do it right there because we don't have anything up above that part of the neck. So then when we get here, I'll do it separate. Okay, what do you guys think this is? Very good. Inferior vena cable. What do you think these are? Same name as arteries. Very good. Intercostal vein. We're not going to do these. This right here. Yes. Look how small it is compared to the inferior. The inferior is very long going all the way up to the heart. Our heart would be about right here. And that would come right out of the top. And the inferior would go all the way up like that into the bottom. At the split, what do they do? What do you think they do right here and right here? They rename them. The same name as the trunk had because this leads to the head and the arm. So, this is brachiocephalic vein. That is brachiocephalic vein. Very different. There are two brachiocephalic veins. The veins are different than the arteries here. So let's come right over here. They both have the same name. And by the way, in case you forgot, in a, from AMP1, Cephalic, very good, head means head. Cephalic means head. 
Brachial means R. So this is the little nub that everything from the head and the arm come back through. Remember, when we get up here, now it's crazy. What's going? That way, right? It's going back to the heart. And right here, it's going down. Right here, it's going up. Here, it's going that way. Here, it's going that way. That's the direction of our blood flow. Out here, obviously going up in the arm. But it's still easier to name them if you move away. So, superior vena cava, brachiocephalic veins. Anybody want to take a wild guess at what this little one is? Subclavian, very good. So I'll just use that arrow. Subclavian vein. So, what would that one be right there? Yep. Sub clavian. Okay. So look here. This splits and it goes there and it goes here. So that kind of makes this easier than the arteries because this one is only right there. That is the axillary vein. It's very easy because the subclavian branches into the axillary and this one that goes here. And this one that goes out here has a name that tells you it crosses the head of the humerus. What means head? Cephalic vein, all the way down, even into the forearm. So sometimes people work out and they get veins that are just under the skin right here that go down the shoulder and into the arm. That's your cephalic vein. It goes down into the forearm right here by your thumb side. Okay. So that's the cephalic vein. Here, Axillary. So now look, we have two. One here. Have to get another color going. And one in the middle. The one in the middle is the main one. Very good. So that's the brachial vein. This one, we didn't see anything with this name before. But we saw an artery that was close. Mm -hmm. So this is the basilic. So it goes axillary, basilic, by the way, stays the basilic all the way down. Just like here, stays the cephalic all the way down. That brachial gets here and you can see it split. I'll just tell you, it won't be on the test, but it becomes the radial and the ulnar, just like the arteries. Okay. So we have cephalic, basilic, and brachial. I highly recommend, there's three right across there. Outside, cephalic, middle, brachial, inside, basilic. If you learn it like that, it makes it easier.
I didn't get to the ones up high. So what I'm going to do is get you take this picture and I ran out of room. I didn't think about that. So let's go ahead and screen cap that. And then let's go to the labeled version just so you can see how they showed it to you. So you'll notice we're not quite done yet, but here's all of these, axillary, brachial, cephalic, basilic, brachiocephalic, subclavian, subclavian, and here we have two. Veins of the neck are different than the arteries. The veins of the neck the external and the internal are completely separate the whole time. And they have different names. These are the internal and external jugular. I'm saying it, I'm enunciating it on purpose. So you see there's two U's, jugular veins, okay? Internal and external jugular. And we'll see them on the the head and neck picture, the internals are bigger, okay? The internals are bigger. You're going to see that on the other picture, that the internals are bigger. Other thing, when we get over here to the arm, there is one that crosses that most of the time, if they're going to take blood from you, this is where they take it. It crosses from the basilic over to the cephalic. It's that diagonal one right there and it's called the median cubital vein, okay? So go ahead and get this picture that shows both up there and down here, along with the rest of them, and I'll do this for you because you don't need to work posterior, just like with the arteries, except what do we need that they left off? I was kind of surprised they did that. The publisher just put, oh, intercostals. They didn't put, uh, it's the veins, right? Posterior intercostal veins are just for us intercostal veins. Notice, just like some of the arteries, the trunks, vena cava are veins, but vena cava is part of their name. You don't have to say vein. That's the form of the name that tells you their vein. Okay, that's it for that one, except I'm going to show you down in the arm that you may want to take a picture of down there. If you want the picture, go ahead and snag it. It just shows the cephalic vein is still the cephalic vein and the basilic is still the basilic. You definitely could be asked those close to the hand down there. Oh, and see what he did? He just covered them, actually. It's very interesting. Must have saved the PowerPoint at some time because things moved. Okay, this one, a little tougher, maybe. Superior vena cava coming up. There would be a brachiocephalic that splits. So we have a brachiocephalic going that way and a brachiocephalic going this way. That's what they're trying to label. But you'll notice we took it away because it just didn't feel fair. They're not showing you where the vena cava branches through. So we're not going to ask brachiocephalic thing. But out here, when it gets further away after this branch, it is subclavian. Coming up here is the internal jugular. 
coming up way out here is the external jugular. And notice we still have this one going between the vertebra called the vertebral vein. So internal jugular vein, vertebral vein, external jugular vein. These veins are like their corresponding arteries, the internal and external carotid, in that they supply the same areas. Well, these drain from the same areas. I don't know if you remember, the internal carotid came down out of the brain. So this one comes down out of the brain and the external came off of the skull. And then this gets a little different because that comes off this way. Anyway, back here, just want to remind you the back of the head is the occipital region. So that's the occipital vein. Right here, just like we had an artery. Vein has the same name. And right here, just like we had an artery, vein has the same name. Okay? Lots of similarities. Lots of similarities. And let me do this just so you know that won't be on there. Okay? All right. That's your head and neck. That is your head and neck. Which way are these vessels carrying blood? Toward the heart. Very good. Toward the heart. And then our last little picture. This here. It's only got a few things. <clears throat> These are the internal jugulars draining from the brain. And there are many veins, many veins that supply the, <clears throat> sorry, that drain fluid off of the brain. And those veins are different than normal veins. They're kind of big and they're formed in a little bit of a different way. There's some membranes around them and so forth. So they give them a different name. Instead of just calling them a vein, they call them a sinus. This top sinus, right, that's going to be the direction, and this one here, they are right in the midline, right between the hemispheres, so it's called sagittal. Don't know if you remember, but sagittal is one G and two Ts, okay? I just like to say that so people have heard it. It's one of the most common misspelled words in AMT, sagittal. One G, two Ts. Right. So the top one is called the superior sagittal sinus. The bottom one is the inferior sagittal sinus. Yes, they are veins. Down low, those sinuses, they're all coming around. They're coming down. They're joining. We have a lot of them. You can see you got lucky. We didn't name a whole ton of them. And then this is the internal jugular, which is then going back down toward the subclavian, and eventually toward the heart. So that's how blood gets back. So that's your last picture for your veins. Really, if you practice, even if you're not a good speller, it means you have to practice more, OK? But if you practice these, come test day, it will seem easy. If you procrastinate on this and wait on test day, it'll seem hard, and you'll go, oh, why did I wait so long? Because it's Truly, half of your test will be named in blood vessels. That's an easy way to pick up a grade, get half of the test right just by learning the names. But the opposite's also true. If you don't learn the names, you can't possibly guess these freaky names for most of them. You could guess femoral, but for most of them, you couldn't guess their names because there's no telling how they chose to name some of these.